Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this animated Photoshop GIF video, I'll be showing you how to take a film clip and turn it into an animated GIF right here inside of Photoshop. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure that you click that like button and also subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn a lot more about Photoshop, take a look for the links in the description and in the video for my complete Photoshop training. Okay, let's get to it. I have this Photoshop GIF animation running inside of an Internet Explorer web browser window, but we're going to be building the whole thing here inside of Photoshop. It's really a couple of basic steps. We're going to be importing video into a timeline in Photoshop, cleaning up that video selection so it has a nice looping aspect to it, doing any kind of video image adjustments, and then saving that out as the animated GIF. All right, now the first thing we need to do is simply to get rid of this and then open up a new file. And the file we need to open is a video file. And to bring video into Photoshop, we'll go up here to File and come down to the Import feature right down here. Now I'm doing this in Photoshop CC 2017, but the same basic steps go back clear to at least Photoshop CS5. So this is you know, able to be done in a lot of different versions of Photoshop. What you want here is video frames to layers right down there. Let's bring that up. This will then bring up a browser window. Go ahead then and find your video. I have it right there. And you can also download this video from my video support page. And the link for that, of course, is in the description. Let's go ahead and bring this one in. Choose Open. This brings up the Import dialog box right here. Now, this whole video is much longer than what you saw in that little clip. If I go ahead and just play this little play button right there, you can watch the whole video. There's a lot of slow action going on here. And what you want to do is you want to find the spot that has a nice little bit of repeating imagery in it, where my little Maya cat there is basically running in a circle. And we'll then, there we are, right in there. And we'll use that little bit for the animation. Now you don't need to import the whole thing you can import just a piece of that. So we know about where it is. So it's right in here. So right about, starting right about there. Let me write, I'll start here. We can adjust the start and end points once we get this imported. Now you have these little options here. This little button here, little button there. Pull those in. That's your start point, your start import point. And then I'll run it around a little bit. Back to there again. That's my end point right here. I'll pull the end point in. So we can now import just this little section. Go ahead and stretch those out just a little bit. Not much, just a touch. And we'll then clean up our animation once we have this import. So we're going to be importing just this piece right in there. Now I can't play just that piece in this window, but I can kind of give you an idea of what that is. You just go ahead and put the play little click control here right on the middle of that bottom edge then click the play button and then stop it once you get to the other edge so it's right about that much now up here we have range to import you can do from beginning to end this is the whole video selected range only that's what you want selected range only you also can limit this to every so you know a few frames we don't need that for ours and you also want to have it checked here it says make frame animation make sure that, that is checked Go ahead, choose OK. It's now going to import that. It's going to be coming in as a whole bunch of layers here inside of Photoshop. Each layer represents a frame of the video. And here we go. See, here's the video down here. This is the timeline. If you're not seeing your timeline, go up to Window and come right down here. It's Timeline right there. Just click on that. So here's our timeline. We have frame 1. If I scroll over here, it comes all the way down to frame 73. I know I don't need that much. I need about 40 frames actually in here. But we'll find just the right bit on this to give us our nice little loop around. Now you can do this if you just kind of look at the cat and we can play the video here. There it is. So right about in here, somewhere in here is where it loops around again. So the cat is there at the beginning. Let's just go back to our beginning again. So here's the beginning position. 
And if I play it through, it comes around and right back to about that position here. So it's about 47, frame 47 on this little playlist right down here. This is our frames in the timeline. So it's about, I know it's less than that. It's about 41, 42 actually. We'll clean this up a bit. So we can start off with getting rid of all of this excess stuff over here on the right hand side from frame 73 down to frame 48. We don't need that. I'll click on frame 48. Hold the shift key down. Click on frame 73. So that selects that whole range from 48 over to 73. We don't need any of this stuff. Go over here, so little icon right there. And up near the top, delete frames. Go ahead and just click on that. Delete frames, yes. That gets rid of all those. And if you look at our layers on the right hand side, you'll see that we still have all of those layers in here. So I haven't lost my layers just in case I want to come in and change my selection or choice. I haven't lost my layers. They've only been removed from the animation. Okay, let's now see how this plays. Go back to the beginning, this little button right there. Back to our start. Click on the play button and I'll play that around. Okay, there's like a little double glitch right there. You see that? Kind of jumps back. That means that we need to get rid of one of the frames at the end. So I get rid of frame 47. Let's just delete that frame and choose yes. Go back to the beginning. We'll try it again. We'll see how we do. Here's still a little bit of a glitch there, so kind of jumping backwards a touch. There's also, of course, a slight shift in the overall picture, which we can't help that. That's a little camera shift. But I can try getting rid of one more frame in here. We'll see how this looks. Let's delete that frame. Choose OK. So we're just tweaking the ending frame on this. Let's see how we do here. Okay, still just a little bit of a jump backwards, like the cat jumps backwards. Let's come back and take off one more frame. And I'm trying to find just the right spot on this where the beginning and ending frames look good. So here's frame one. And then we're ending on 44. It's still too far. Let me see. It might be back at about frame 43. It looks pretty close. Notice there is a frame shift. The overall image shifts. We can't do anything about that. Let me frame 41. Okay, I think 41 looks pretty good. So I'm going to get rid of 42 through 44. There we go. Click on your first one. Hold the shift key down, click on your last one, and then delete those frames. Let's look at that again. There's frame 41. There's frame 1 should be just ahead of that. That looks pretty good. Let's click play, and we'll see how that looks. Okay, there's a slight jump in there as the overall frame shifts, but I think that looks pretty good. Of course, it's not perfect because the cat didn't do a perfect circle, but it, it kind of has a nice flow on that one. So there we go. There's our cat circling around. That's the first thing. We have our basic flow for the animation. The next thing we want to do is we want to lighten the image up. This is obviously too dark in here. We can easily do that. Just scroll up here to the top layer over here in your layers and then let's put an adjustment layer above this. So go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels right there. Now where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, don't do that. Just leave that unchecked. Choose OK. Now pulling this control to the left, we can lighten the picture up. to get a nice, nice bright picture in there. You can increase contrast by pulling the ends in. So I can make my darks darker here a little bit. Make my lights lighter. Just kind of increase the contrast a bit. Punch here this way, it looks a bit more exciting. Maybe adjust my values a touch. There we go. So this allows you to come in and control your values. Now if your values are too bright, you can use the bottom controls to tone that down. The right control will darken down the overall image. The left control kind of brightens up. It gets rid of the darks in the image. If your darks are too dark, move this one in. If your whites are too bright, move this one in. But all we need to do is the top controls in here. So it's our middle control over to the left of ways. I put it at 1.92. I pulled the blacks in a little bit at 7 and the whites in a bit at 176. Let's go back to the beginning, which is that button right there. 
and we'll play that. And there we are. Nice bright image. You can see everything nicely in here. Now if you need more adjustments, you can do that. I could put a color adjustment above this. Anything you want, just anything that's available over here under the adjustment layers, you can use any of this to add adjustments onto your image. Just put them in as adjustment layers on top of your whole layer stack. And they'll apply to all of the frames inside your animation. Okay, that's the second part. That's done. Now, the next part we need to bring this in. I want to be in tighter on the image. And of course, because this is an animated GIF, I don't want it too large. You don't want these things being huge. You want them to be fairly small, easy to use on smartphones or on web pages, whatever. So we want to bring this in. So what I'm going to be doing here is looking for where the cat is at the top of her path, which is right about in here someplace. That's about as far up as she goes. And I'll bring a guideline in, and they must have a little bit of space above her right there. I know that frame 1 is down by the bottom. Let's go over here to frame 41. It's a little higher. So it's about as low as she goes right here on frame 1. So I'll bring in a guideline down below that a bit. Just a little bit of comfortable space. So that the cat should stay inside of those two guidelines. Let's double check that. On our first frame, let's go ahead and play this and make sure the cat stays inside of those guidelines. So it's out a little bit right there. Okay. There was a bit where the tail went out. I think it was up towards the end. I'm going to find that. Okay, there's the tail goes up. That's about as high as it goes. So I'm going to pull this guideline up a little bit. So the tail always stays within our frame. There we are. Let's go ahead back to our beginning. Play again. And let's watch the bottom this time. And it looks like about here is about as low as the cat gets. Right about here. So I could pull the bottom up a little bit if I wanted to. Click on play. Or on, on stop, I'll pull it up just a little bit. Let's double check that one more time. Back to the beginning. And run our animation and make sure the cat stays inside of our frame. That does pretty good. Okay, our cat's inside the frame. Now we need to crop into our image here. We can do that with the crop tool right there. There we go. With the crop tool, you want to keep this on the original ratio usually. If you want a different ratio, that's fine. You can choose any standard ratio in here that you want to be working with. But I'll leave mine at the original ratio. It's just kind of a standard 3 to 4 video frame ratio. And then I'll pull in my control handles in here. until I get this nicely placed about where the cat is. Let's now just play the cat and see if I think we're, we're going to be okay on this one. About like that. We can double check this. Let me just undo this and just stop this for a second. I'm going to put in some guidelines on the left and the right hand side as well. Just so we know the limits of how far to the left and the right the cat goes. Okay, so let's see, right about right about there is about as far as the cat goes to the left, kind of even with this bit here. So a little bit of space there. That's okay on the left-hand side. Let's watch the right-hand side now. Looks like the cat doesn't go much further than about here. So a little bit of space would be about over here. Okay, we'll stop that. And... A little bit of space. Okay, so as long as our crop leaves this selected, we'll be okay. Our cat will be fine. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the crop is not going to be exactly to these positions. That's why I make sure this part is displayed inside of the crop. Okay, back to our crop. There's the crop tool. And now just pull this in and let's see how close we can get to that. Just kind of pull it in from the bottom here until I got my edges. And I think right about there is pretty good. I'm actually pretty close on this. But I think I'll bring it out just just a bit. And let me set this at the original ratio. There we go. Just a slight adjustment on the bottom. Okay, that looks pretty good. And the cat's going to be inside of our crop frame the whole time here, which is what I wanted. It might be out a little bit at the top here. Let me just pull this up just a touch. There we go. Just give myself a little bit more space around there to guarantee that the cat always stays inside of the frame. That's what I want to have happen here. All right, there we go. So there's our crop. 
go ahead click on the check and that crops that down to that point we now no longer need those guidelines let's go ahead and let's just clear those guides out and go back to our beginning let's play this one more time and there's the animation the cat's staying inside of our crop the whole time that's just fine now for the last little bit we need to export this animation out to an animated GIF format. Now in Photoshop CC 2017, they've moved where you do that. Before, you go up here to File, and you would come down to Save for Web, down here someplace, and you would then use Save for Web and save it to an animated GIF that way. What they've done here is they've moved that over here to Export, and Save for Web is over here. So if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, you'll find Safer Web over here in the regular list. If you're in CC 2017, it's been moved over underneath the export and it's called Safer Web Legacy right there. Click on that. Brings up our Safer Web dialog box. Let me see if I can get this thing to fit completely in our window here. That's about as far as it goes. Oh, there we go. Everything we need is showing. Okay, at the top, set this at GIF, very top option up here. Set your colors at 256. And then down at the bottom down here, we have animation. You want a looping animation, looping options. You can choose how many times you want us to play. Once, forever, or set in a specific number of loops. You know, three loops, five loops, whatever. I'll set mine at forever. We can double check one more time. Let's go back to the beginning. That's our first button here. Let's play this. Make sure it plays fine. There we go. We're not seeing the whole frame in here, so don't worry about the bottom being cut off. We're just not seeing that in this preview window. But looks good. All we need to do now is just to save this. Go ahead, click on Save right there. Choose a name for it. There's my test you saw previously. Let me just save this one as Cat2. Now in here you have some options. You have Format, HTML and images, images only, HTML only. You want images only. That just gives you just that. And settings, leave these at default settings and you should be fine. When you're ready, just go ahead and click on save. It's going to save that out as the animated GIF. And there we go. Let me just go ahead now, let's bring this up in a browser window and see how it looks. Okay, here's the I have these things stored in. There's the original video. There's my first sample you saw at the beginning of this video. And here's the one we just did. I'll double click on that. This will then launch this in Internet Explorer. And there it is. There's our nice little animated GIF playing right here inside of a web browser. So there it is. That's how you take a video clip and turn it into an animated GIF image. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.